Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Agent's Edge. My name is Ryan Palomini. Today we have a very special guest, Mr. Nate Offert and uh, from SWAT. And looking forward to actually diving a little bit deeper into that, into the brand and uh, some of the things that you've got going on. But, you know, as just to introduce you a little bit, it's, uh, I've been following you for quite some time. You know, obviously we don't really, haven't really got a chance to know each other too deep. We've had a conversation and, um, but really been following what you're doing. And it's, it's really, you know, interesting to watch you go from, I know you built a really large agency, which we're going to get into and, and, you know, all across the country and some of the tactics that you've used to build your agency to me is really appealing because, you know, what you've done and really build a foundation to let that thing grow and grow and grow is impressive, but then taking it another level and really bringing the education component to the industry through your SWAT events really caught my attention. And I'm like, you know, this Nate is doing something special here because, you know, he's, he's taking what he knows and bringing it openly to an industry, which Nate, you and I could probably agree, but I've been in this for 12 years, so you've been in it for a while, really kind of a cutthroat. Uh, we don't really share secrets a lot of times. We don't do cross line stuff. We don't do cross agency things, you know, but you're like, you know what, let's open it up, man. Let, let, let's bring it, let's bring the content, bring the heat to the industry. And that's really what this show is about too. This show is about bringing people on uh, to just deliver content, to, to, you know, let the audience, no matter what company you work for, agency you work for, to really just grow and learn as an as a as an agent you know uh in an industry so that's the purpose of this of this show but really Nate I want to just bring you on introduce yourself if you don't mind and then what I want to do is I want to ask you some questions about you know how you've done what you've done what SWAT means and really uh some of the things you and I were talking about that I really picked up up on is the power of a mentor you meant to you mentioned that a lot so I want to dive deep into that but if you don't mind just uh introduce yourself and we'll get rock and rolling it's where I just go, hi, I'm Nate Offert. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, give us a little about your background. And, uh, you know. Let me ask you this question real quick, Ryan, because you're, you're a super impressive dude. I mean, you, you probably bring all these guests on, talk how impressive you think they are. But um, I actually had a chance to hear you talk uh, one time, and you like were in this boardroom, looked like it was the Last Supper. It was beautiful. I don't know, that's probably, that's probably cost 10 grand just to sit behind it. But uh, uh, you were very impressive. You really caught my attention of, of knowing your stuff. Um, and I'll say that lightly because there's a lot of people who teach success. Um, really don't know their stuff, if that makes sense. Yeah. I guess what I mean about that, you know, my mentor used to always tell me, you know, if you, if you can't do it, write a book about it. And, <laughs> oh, no, if you can't do it, teach it. If you can't teach it, write a book about it, right? So exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not knocking anybody who can do it teach it and write a book, but there's a lot of people out there that write a lot of books and teach a lot of stuff they've never done. So yeah. considering what you, your background and the, what I've heard about from Cody about you and the uh, amount of sheer volume personally, as well with a, a team of people that you do in, in annuities is just mind boggling. Um, I always said, I wish I had someone like you that was involved. Now, now the IMO that I'm with right now have, have their own uh, quality retirement solutions to where we can toss them over our shoulders. But when I was back in the field, yeah. And I found a lot of money. Then this little sheet yeah. said, find the money. Kind of like, well, you know, if I do mortgage protection primarily is what I grew up on basically. But, you know, in case, you know, Jan, uh, Jan, Sue, whoever, you know, if your husband died yesterday, you know, what else do you have put in place that she would get, you know, like, you know, IRAs, 401ks, you know, maybe some mama don't know money or mattress money, right? Sure. What else would she get that would be able to provide for her? And they'd always tell you. And so I'd uncover 100,000, 200,000, 400,000, 300,000. And I just wasn't, you know, I'm not the brightest guy, the sharpest knife in the drawer, as they say, when it comes to like, I, I, I want to learn from somebody who's done something, learn their techniques, duplicate their techniques, and be able to have the success that they had. And so I just never really got good in the annuity space. So, um, you know, it's to hear the numbers that you're doing, which I don't know if your audience knows the numbers that you're doing. I don't know if you want me to tell them, but yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. hundreds of millions of dollars of, of volume in terms of annuities is super impressive. So I'm, I'm uh, grateful to be on, on your show. Hopefully I could bring some value. I mean, I think you, I, I think should, I should interview you and you should bring the value to them. <laughs> you're always doing the interviewing. So I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, thanks no, for being no, on, man. No one's special, man. Just uh, like you said, my, information that I got <clears throat> from my mentor learning from him and some other mentors that came to my life is invaluable because, you know, there's an expression out there, Ryan, that you don't know what you don't know. Yep. And I don't know what I don't know yep. until someone points out going, Hey, you don't know. Exactly. And when you find out the things you don't know, 
it's amazing how your life can change because, you know, like with everything going on, I know nothing about NFTs. I know it stands for non-functional token, but guess what? <laughs> I want to do NFTs. There's people out there that know about NFTs or know yeah. about cryptocurrency who know about whatever. Right. And I see so many people like, you know, they get involved with whatever opportunity. And to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense. They, they, they either take a test, read a book, go research on their own and go out and try to do it. And they wonder why I don't have success. Well, I learned very easy early in my life that if you sit behind the straight A student, no, hold this against me. Well, maybe I heard this through a friend, right? And 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 you position yourself where you can see their paper and what dots they're filling in. <laughs> and on A, they fill in B, you know, number one, they fill in the B dot, number two, they fill in the C dot, number three, and you're able to copy what they're filling in and miss one or two. So it doesn't look like a copy. And they get their paper back and they get hundred percent and yours shows up with a 98. I, it's not, whoa, look at me. I'm impressive. It's just like, Hey, I was able to cheat. I was able to copy <laughs> off of someone who knows what the hell they're doing. So, you know, when I learned about that, the key is success. When we talk about mentorship, yeah. let's find someone who has what you want, do what they do and you'll get what they got. Like it was the first time in my life that after I struggled for years and years and years, when I heard that, I was like going, wow, like I cheated in high school. You know, if you guys are listening, you know, I know not all of you guys ever cheated before, right? Sure. I was, I'm in an audience. I said, how many ever cheated before? And like three people raised their hand. I'm like the rest yeah, right. of your guys are liars and cheaters. Now we know who you are, right? But, <laughs> you know, whatever it is in a good way. I realized that success isn't as hard as I thought it was because I always thought it is something I had to become, which you do need to have personal growth, or I had to learn, or I had to become an expert at when in all reality, I could just find somebody else who's already accomplished what I want to accomplish and just cheat and do what they do and learn from them. And I can have the equivalent or a percentage of success they've had based upon their knowledge. So I, I know for me personally, I overcomplicated it a lot and I was broke for many, many years overcomplicating it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, and I agree with you hundred percent. I mean, you know, you talk about the annuity side of the world. I started like you did, you know, I, I spent my first six, seven years selling mortgage protection, final expense. I didn't even know how to spell the word annuity. Right. I was, right. my upline, I was like, yeah, go find some money. And I was like, and do what? <laughs> I was like, what do I say? What do I do? What the hell is an annuity? I a lot of money just didn't do anything with it. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, and, and so, you know, as I kind of made the transition, I did exactly what you did, man. I went out and found somebody that literally like my mentor does $20 million a year from his office and never let you know we're running out in the field i'm running house to house knocking on doors he's writing 20 million dollars a year doing a seminar people coming to him i'm like that's the model that i want to model you know and right. so you know that for me has been a big help to having a mentor and i think that a lot of people nate and you can probably back me on this a lot of people struggle to find the right mentor you know maybe they look at their upline as the mentor maybe they don't have the same values as their upline so Nate, fill me and tell us a little bit about your background getting into the insurance world. You know, when you got in, did you have the mentor you have today or was it something that's evolved over time? Tell me a little about that. The beginnings are there. Yeah, I think it was Grant Cardone said, if you can't afford to get in the room, figure out a way to serve water. I think it's what he <laughs> yeah, it's, said. It's crazy. Um, yeah, I think it was Grant. I think Grant Cardone said that one. But it, it, it was, uh, you know, <clears throat> I, I don't want to go back too far. You know, back when I was about three and a half, I remember, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't graduate college. We'll just leave it at that. And, and, right. and if you guys have heard any of my other interviews or podcasts, I don't want to bore you with the same details. I did talk about some other stuff, but I got drug into a network marketing company. Um, I tried to leave the meeting and then they started wheeling in this TV when they started talking about all these individuals that had success that had horrific backgrounds, like, you know, pot and pan, door to door salesman, social worker, preschool teacher. And they were all making 30 grand a month. And back in, you know, 1996, I was like, whoa, you know, 30 grand a month was like yeah. mind blown, right? You know, and, and you get involved in the insurance industry that it's weird how your perception of money changes. Like 30 grand a month, sure. eh, that's, that's okay. I mean, that's a decent month. But like, right. if you're with the right, you know, company, IMO, uh, sure. uh, you know, mentor, sure. whatever case it be, and you have leads to work with them. So I was trying to get out of there. Uh, they were talking about environmental products and health nutrition. I wasn't really a big health nut. The bottled water wasn't even on the scene yet. You know, you, you go to the grocery store and they had the distilled water for your mom's iron. If you remember back in those days, I don't know how old you are, but I'm dating myself. And when that, my mentor, the, who, the gentleman who eventually became my mentor, he came on the screen and he's standing in front of this, you know, half million dollar car, which I didn't grow up with any type of money. He always, always taught money doesn't buy happiness. And I used to think, well, near does being broke because I've been yeah. broke. It doesn't make me happy, you know? <laughs> uh, you know, and, and you got his arms folded and he's like, you know, where are you going to be in the next five years if you keep doing what you've been doing? 
Where are you going to be if you follow the man that built the track to follow, that took the other people down that track, and they wound up immensely successful? Where could you be if you just did what they did? Mm. And that was kind of a moment in my light bulb went off in my head. I went, whoa, wow. I never had anybody in my life teach me about wealth and success yeah. or how to achieve it and, 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 and be there to follow because me and my family, though my parents were great, I never was surrounded with wealth. No one in our church that I knew personally was wealthy. Um, I didn't have anybody aunts, uncles that ran businesses. I you know my grandfather did, but he had passed away. You know, he ran an appliance shop out of the back room of his house. Basically, they moved into a, a, a little appliance shop. And so I got involved and um, I didn't obviously have the chance to work personally with him. And the mentors that I quote unquote was working with, they quit about mm-hmm. six weeks into the business. There I was with a buddy from college and we were trying to do it on our own and we failed miserably, you know, went broke, went a hundred thousand dollars in debt. I um, mean, we were living a, long, long. I mean, I was a poster child for, you know, why you never want to do network marketing. <laughs> you know, I was that friend you knew, right? Like, oh boy, yeah. dropped out of college. I don't want to do it. But then you have people that make millions of dollars in that industry. So when I met my mentor or got a chance to work with him personally, um, it was a by accident. Um, I, their my upline won a contest. They couldn't go for whatever reason. I was friends with them. They said, do you want to go? And I just remember, I mean, it was like, I was just in awe because like, you know, I walk into his house, he had like 10 homes across the, the country. And, and back then it was cool to make a lot of money and to show it off, you know, you call right. it back in the nineties, you know, he had, what uh, $10 million, uh, you know, $20 million mega yacht. He had uh, 32 you know, I, I don't know, Lamborghinis, Ferraris. I think it was like a huge collection where uh, of these exotic cars and 110 boats and, you know, 10 states across the country. I mean, I walked into his house and he had, this crystal in the corner that looked, it was probably, I think it was like worth 250,000 bucks. It's just ridiculous. He's making a million dollars a week net net after paying for his pilot and paying for his full crew on the boat. Um, he had a Harley Davidson, like 75th anniversary edition, hundred thousand dollar, but it was an ornament above his door. <laughs> like, you know, someone would go to target and buy like whatever that was hanging it was <laughs> above his door in, in the spot. And so like, I followed him around and I was asking like, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? And like, I was like one of those annoying people because I was like, man, here's my chance. Here's a guy who's made a million a week doing what I'm trying to do. Right. Here's my shot. I don't know if I ever get the shot again. And the next day we went to his corporate office and um, back then you would suit up and everything. I never forget. He, he never lets me live it down, but like I showed up in my brand new Sears suit that I got, you know, and I forgot my dress shoes. So I showed up in flip-flops. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, nice shoes, Nate. And um, I went and asked, I share a story a lot for a reason. I asked for his pager number because back then pagers just came out. Yeah. You, know, you could turn them up and write hello or 911 in the back, you know. <laughs> and he goes, well, let, let me ask you a question. Hey, how much volume have, have you done so far? And I was in the company for like three years. And, you know, it took 20,000 to hit a director level. I'd never hit past supervisor. Um, and so I used to call myself a stupid visor because I was like the longest history of the company of being stuck in a supervisor. And I told him like $17,000. He goes, great. He goes, when you do 25, I'll give you my patron number. And I'm thinking, well, 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 no, you don't understand. I I don't know how to do 25 because if I know how to do 25, I already have, I need your patron number so you can teach me so I can learn on how to do 25. And he walked out of the room and the next month I did $32,000 in volume. Wow. And it was, that was the first time I really realize what a mentor can do in your life. Cause a lot of people see out mentors to learn, just to learn the tangibles. Like, well, how do I structure this annuity? What about the suitability form? And how would I do it? Yeah. That's only a small part of it. Absolutely. Right. Yep. So what I learned there was, you know, same product, same compensation plan, same, everything that I had never could do over $17,000 in three years. And in a moment's notice, because I had a have to, mm-hmm. I was able to almost double it with the same opportunity that I had and the same skill level I had. And that was the first valuable lesson that I, that I realized was, you know what, what a mentor can make you realize, which you don't know, because you're on the other side of it, is that a lot of times we have all the tools and the skills and abilities that we need to achieve the level of success we want. We just don't have a reason strong enough to do so. And so when I got his pager number, I started working with him individually and he helped me go. Um, I think the most I made in that company was 3000 in a month. And in less than 90 days, it went from 3000 a month to over 20000 a month. And I was a millionaire in less than a year and a half. Wow. And a lot of things I learned from him weren't necessarily what you think that you would learn from a mentor. Because what if I never they? made... What, what were some of the things that you learned? Well, you know, it, it, it's... 
if I never made a million dollars a week, how in the world can I know what it's going to take to make a million dollars a week? And the biggest mistake a lot of people when I mentor is they come in with preconceived ideas of what they want to learn from you or what they need to know yeah. in order to have the success they need to have. And so they block out the things that are really the things that you need to have. Yeah. Like we talked about, you know, for 14,000 hours from kindergarten to 12th grade, you spent in school learning how to be an employee learning things that were irrelevant to your success. So you've been set up for failure. So as soon as you start to realize how dumb you are and how much you don't know about success, the sooner I'll be able to teach and train you on how to have what really successful people need to have in order to have success. So I think when, anytime you're seeking out a mentor, it, you got to be, I know for, for me, and I was at a point, I was so broke in my life, I was very teachable. And the yeah. hardest thing I think for people finding mentors is when they're having a little bit of success. Cause my mentor always used to teach me was the worst, the most, the most dangerous thing about success is just a little bit. Yeah. Cause you have that little bit of success, Ryan, you feel like, Oh, I know what I'm doing. When in reality, you don't because right. you're not on the other side of it. Right. I can't teach you to make a million dollars a week. Cause I never have, but if I can be mentored by somebody, I got to be open, open and willing to learn everything he tells me so him exactly. telling me turn the news off quit watching the news because there's nothing positive on there you may question it but i didn't even know about the weather i just did it yep right when he said that's junk it's negative get it out of your life hey you're gonna have to have short-term sacrifice for the long-term payoff like in the things like a lot of the things that i would just never learn growing up from from my family or, or growing up from from school you know there was obviously strategic tactics which we can talk about but it was more about how to have the right mindset and the mind frame and what wealthy people do. You used to always say, act as if I'm making $100,000 a month. Right. If you're making 100000 a month and you got a flat tire, would it really affect your life because you had to replace a $300 tire? Right. He goes, but it will when you're broke, you have no money. So when can you start acting as if you're already making 100000 a month? You can have that same mindset of making 100000 a month and on every decision you make, every emotion that you have, Everything that you do when you wake up from the morning, I'm making a hundred day a month. You have a sales guy quit. Is it going to be that big of a deal? No. Nope. I take your cards. You know what No. So that was like a mind shift. That, and it didn't happen overnight, obviously, but it was a mind shift of me learning. Okay. I got to act as if I got to act as if I'm already making a million dollars a year or I'm never going to make. Mm -hmm. And everyone thinks, oh, that sounds so trite or so simple or so easy. It's not easy to do. Right. It's not easy to do when, when, when things happen and you go out and you write $10,000 in a week and $8,000 charges back because of whatever weird scenarios are. And you're counting on a $7,000 coming to your bank account and then five goes out the door. Yeah. If you're making a hundred thousand dollars a month, is it going to matter? Nate, how would you, so on that topic, this is actually really good. What would you say the difference? Because I hear it, but I want to see if you, if you say it, the difference between what you just said about acting as if versus fake it till you make it. <laughs> <laughs> Let, oh. Let's talk about that because I think that if if everybody listening didn't just catch it, there's a big difference. And so, but but tell me about that. Tell me about the oh. difference between fake it till you make it versus acting as if. Well, fake fake it till you make it is acting as if you're making hundred thousand a month. The challenge is fake it until you make it became go buy a Rolex watch you can't afford and a car you can't afford. <laughs> but you look like you're having success. Yes. And that's just plain lying. Right. You know, you, you know, you can hear all the different wealthy people. Like there's wealthy people driving around in pickup trucks. I was making 20, 30 grand a month driving in a Nissan Maxima with uh, the tinted windows that were supposed to be cool back then with mirrored tinted, tinted windows pulling up to an office to do a meeting. Yeah. Right. And I'd park my car off, off way off to the side. And there'd be guys that are making five, six grand a month, pulling up in Mercedes and Jaguars and Porsches, trying to show off. And I'm like, I'm building a business, man. Right. I'll park my right. car down there. No, I'm not going to sign someone up because of the way I park my car. I'm going to sign someone up because they're looking for someone to follow. I'm going to sign someone up because they have some, hey, there's someone's going somewhere. He's taking other people down there. Mm. He has a track record. He has a whole team of people that took from nothing to success. I want that. I want to follow him. They don't care about my car. I'll go to lunch with them in their car. So I can be with me more relatable to them. So, you know, I, when I bought my McLaren, I hid it for three years. No one in my sales force knew I had it. No, I didn't buy that to show off. I didn't buy it to give me credibility. I bought it because I wanted to have a cool car because my mentor had a bunch of cool cars and he got me addicted to cool cars. But like no one saw my house on Facebook. I bought my wife a million dollar house. I, I didn't post it on Facebook. I'm not saying people that do, they do it for other reasons, for advertising, right. I, whatever. But like to me, that stuff was for me. That was like a trophy for me. It didn't exactly. really help 
me in any way, shape or form. I, I feel, and I know to go out and recruit or get someone involved because the more, the bigger I become, the less relatable I am. I'm a college dropout, man. Yeah. <laughs> I put my pants on the same way you do. I grew up in a home where, you know, going to McDonald's was really literally a treat once a year where they get a T-bone steak on a, on a, on a special occasion. And we'd split it six ways. I'm not lying. I mean, and Mac yeah. and cheese. Right. So I got to stay relatable. That's one thing my mentor always taught me. Like that stuff's a trophy. You know, I always make the expression, I've never seen a hearse pull in a U-Haul. You know, it's like, whatever you get it. You bought nice stuff, I'm sure. And it's exciting. It's fun, but it's no different than buying, buying a brand new car at 18 or buying a brand new McLaren. There is no difference in terms of that. It's exciting and fulfilling. And then all of a sudden, you're on to the next and it sits in the garage and collects dust and you drive it once in a while. And you're kind of yeah, like, yeah. you know, whatever. So if you're doing, if you're trying to get that, you know, people talk about all the time, materialistic stuff is fun. It's nice. It's exciting. And it's great. And it does make you happy. Mm -hmm. um, I, this doesn't buy you fulfillment. Right. Anyone in the world that, that dude, Christmas just happened. You're a kid and you get every gift on the list you want. You cannot tell me you're not happy. Yeah. You can't tell me it's BS. Oh no, I didn't buy happy. It's like a kid saying Christmas doesn't make it. It makes them happy. But what happens to half the toys six months later? Yep. The electric scooter you bought and the battery's not charged anymore. That's sitting in the back. It's got cobwebs on it, right? Yep. The new hockey sticks. Now he's in the baseball. So the hockey stick and the hockey net are hanging up in the garage, hoping that one day he's going to use it again. It, it's no different. Exactly. But so many, so many people want to deny the fact that it make, it makes you happy. Yeah. It only buys happiness. It just right. doesn't buy fulfillment. Right. Right. And so that makes it's a great point because, you know, a lot of people in our industry, Nate, I see them, dude. I mean, I've been, I coach over 4,000 people in the last decade. I, I see the, the people who come that are driving the BMWs and Mercedes. They are, they, they you go, Hey, go spend $2,000 on leads. They go, I can't, but you can afford the BMW. I mean, it's the priority. Well, they, can't but afford it. they can't afford it. That's why they're driving <laughs> until you make it. They're pretending exactly. they can afford something they can't, which is exactly, exactly it's backwards. It's ridiculous. Well, what I hear from you that I think is so important and is really the mindset of how to be a business owner uh, versus a salesperson, right? Because your thoughts are, yeah, you gotta, you gotta fake it a little bit till you make it, but you, but the mindset is so much different than the agent that's out there just chasing lead, chasing lead, chasing lead, chasing lead. There has to be something bigger, and the mentor is what can get you to that level because they're gonna change the way you think. And that's you know, like when I coach people, I know listening to you, you're all about the same thing. When I coach people. I, I go read the product guide. I'm not going to teach you what a, you know how to sell an annuity through a product. I teach you the mindset and the systems behind getting to massive productions and getting in front of the right kind of people. And you do the same thing. You know, I'm listening to as you recruit. It's not about the stuff. It is about the you know the nuts and bolts really of how to do it, and without trying to you know bring a lot of fluff into there. So um, you, you fake it till you make it. You're faking out your attitude. Is the yeah, thing. Yeah. So there, there's no fake it till you make it to buy stuff that you can't afford, right? I mean, if you want to go to a point where you want to dress a little nicer, you know, than you normally dress, and you're not wearing ripped up jeans and a t-shirt, and you want to buy a nice suit or two back in the day or a nice shirt or whatever, I, that's not faking till you make it. That's just playing the role, right? You know, you, you got to, you can't be a role playing a role of an advisor and look like you just got, you know, uh, out of the, your buddy's car to go down to the gym, you know, so you got to yeah. have a little bit of, common sense in terms of playing the role but the fake it till you make it is faking that at like my slogan this year is be the best you in 2022 right mm -hmm. or a new you in 2022 depending on where you're at yeah. so if you really got to a good level how can i be a bad i don't need to come new i'm going to become the best you in 2022 or a new you in 2022 right. so if you haven't had the success <clears throat> you don't have the con like my, the best thing my mentor said to me he goes we were at a training as before i personally was mentored by him and we're sitting there and he goes, I don't know who you guys all walked in here today as, but what I do know is you can walk out of here, anybody you want to be. Wow. And the only people that are going to give you crap about it are the people that know you well and screw them. Cause it ain't going to matter. Like mom, dad, brother, sister, not in a bad way, but like, don't worry about what they say mm -hmm. because you can walk out of here. You're not confident. You borrow mine and you can be confident and no one's going to know you get to fake them out. I'm confident. I mean, he said, how do you know when someone's confident? Do they tell you? Do they have a degree? Is it in their pocketbook? Is it based on the car they're driving? Or is the way they shake their hand, the way they look in their eye, and the way they talk, the speed of talk, and their confidence? So I started to learn how to fake being confident until I became confident. Mm -hmm. I learned how to fake how to make decisions quickly and not change, you know, making them. Most people 
contemplate, think and grow rich. People contemplate to evaluate, to consider, to discuss before they ever make a decision. 97% of America, only 3% get wealthy. They make decisions quickly and change them slowly. And they're okay with making the wrong decision because they're going to learn from it and they're going to adapt and overcome. That is a huge average person mentality, Nate Offert mentality of, I was always, I couldn't even buy a pair of shoes, Ryan, without being in there almost sweating. I know it sounds silly, but I'm like, oh my God, like it's an $80 pair of shoes. Like try the red ones, the green ones. What do you think? What do you think of this? What do you think? Of, right. Like people, I'm like, you're not going to have success doing that. Yeah. Pick a pair of shoes. Great. You wear them a couple of times. People think they're stupid. You don't like wear them anymore. Go buy a new pair. So simple, dumb things like that was holding me back from success so much. So I had to fake my own confidence. I had to fake belief in myself. I had to fake out people that I, I knew that I was sure about myself. I had to fake myself into making decisions quickly and changing them slowly. And those are the things that the expression fake it till you make it really was meant for. And people have right. twisted it around. Yeah. You know, yeah. And some people are listening to this. I mean, you hang up 2022, um, you know, depending when you're listening to it, whatever. It doesn't matter. You can literally change and walk out the door a different person. And it's, yep. it's, it doesn't take, and I'll share this quick story with you. It doesn't take a year to do it, two years or three years. And then Coach Bird talks about flipping the switch, which is funny because my mentor, I'm sitting in his office and I was stuck. And, you know, I was doing well you know, three or four months into after mentoring, but I wasn't doing where I really needed to be. And I'm sitting there going, well, you know, I, I feel like I need this. I feel like I need that. And, you know, it's like, I don't understand this part. And if you only could teach me this and I'm giving all this stuff and he's just sitting there working like he did. And he was pretty abrasive, but he said, Hey, give me a favor. Go, up, go over there and try to turn the light off. Said, what? He goes, go there and try to turn the light off. I stood up and I walked over and the light's on. Right. So I take the switch and I'm like, say, I said, try and turn the light off. <laughs> I said, hey, he's like, you're not doing anything. I said, okay, great. I flipped it off. He goes, I didn't turn, turn, turn the light off. I said, try and turn the light off. I said, well, I, I don't even understand. He goes, Nate, what part of the thing I'm trying to tell you? Try and turn the light off. Do you not speak English? Do you not understand what I'm talking about? And I'm sitting there. I'm feeling like shriveling up and everything else. And he goes, that's exactly. I said, I can't. He goes, you're exactly right. You either do it or you don't. You keep trying to have success. You keep trying to hit the next level. You keep trying to figure out what it is you're missing instead of just doing it. Either flip it on or flip it off because you're not going to get anywhere trying. And it was another pivotal point in my life where it was like going, wow, you know, and, and so many times in my life, I was trying to figure out what I was doing wrong and trying to figure out the one line that I didn't do it or trying to figure out why they won't transfer for your money in your business and trying to figure out why I don't understand this or trying to figure out why the older people don't relate to me or trying to figure out why this person I can't recruit or I trying to always figure out why I can't keep my, and I was trying myself right into failure. Yeah. But I just realized that I either got to flip it on or off and it doesn't take, like, imagine, I mean, how dumb are you being? Like, oh, trying to <laughs> turn on. And yeah. it's that easy. Are you going to make mistakes? Yeah. Are you going to screw up? Yeah. Are you going to be an overnight success of that? Absolutely not. But you finally got on the right road. That's right. So now, now you're not um, trying, you know, I was playing a video opening video for our sales uh, team here with my, my agency. And I found a really, really good video that Jim Rohn did um, on YouTube um, about setting goals, you know, your long-term goals. And I'm big into goals and everything else. And it was funny because he was, I, I, he, my mentor was actually mentored by Jim Rome a little bit as well. So, but they both talked about the same thing. And I was talking about my, my sales team today. It's like, you know, Jim Rome puts it in, in a different perspective and my mentor picked up a different perspective. But what, what I got from my mentor, he always said, people spend more time and energy picking out a birthday present for a friend than they ever do design their life. Wow. Jim wow. Rohn said that people spend more time and energy picking out and planning a two week vacation away from the reality when they don't even know the reality where they want to go than they ever do designing a life. Wow. And so I looked at that and then my analogy was like, imagine getting up in the morning. Bye honey. Get in your car. Where are you going? I don't know. Just driving. <laughs> we're driving to where? I don't know. Everyone else is doing it. Everyone else is driving. I'm just going to drive. Yeah, but I don't understand where, like, where are you going? I don't know. I'm just driving. They get in the car and they drive all day. You get them home. And, How was your day? Great. What'd you get accomplished? Where'd you go? I didn't go anywhere. Why not? Well, I didn't know where I was going. So what are you do tomorrow? Same thing. And they go to bed and they get up and they get in the car. And where are you going today, honey? I don't know. Just going to drive. And, it, and as dumb as it sounds, 
I was doing that my whole life. Most people yeah. are just driving around and they have no idea where they want to go. And people are like, oh, that's not true. Everything else, great. I'll test all of you guys here. This is a this is a reality check. Write down right now something that you accomplished in 2021 that you set up to accomplish 10 years ago. Write it down. I'll give you a minute because most people are going to struggle to do that. Yeah. Write down something you accomplished in 2021 that you set out to do five years ago. Mental, spiritual, physical, emotional, financial. I'm not talking about just money. Something that you accomplished a year ago in 2021 that you accomplished in 2021 during that year as of right now. And most of us will struggle to do that. So it's a, it's a rude reality in the mirror. That's how my mentor trained me and said, okay, well, you are no, you are no different than the person that you think is silly. That's getting in the car 365 days a year, turning the ignition, paying it for his gas and just driving around to nowhere. Wow. And so again, this isn't my stuff. Jim Rohn talked about it. How old is he? Right. right? You know, and, and then my mentor talked about it and I have my own little analogy about it, but it's like, you know, it, I was talking to my sales team going, guys, quit drive, quit, just quit driving around. Mm. I'd rather have you drive 10 miles an hour, Ryan, towards a destination than to drive a hundred miles an hour and have no idea where you're going. If you're going 10 miles an hour a day on Monday and 10 miles an hour a day on Tuesday, you're not the best. You're not the fastest. You're not the quickest. You're still 10 miles Wednesday, Thursday. And this guy's Mr. Speedy Gonzalez. He has no <laughs> idea where he's going. After a year, you're going to be way closer to your target and your goal than this guy will ever be. But most people are spending their time like myself. I can go fast. I got to do this. I got to be quick. I got to be on my feet. But I was just driving around. I was like Moses in the wilderness looking for the promised land. I mean, my God, it's like, you know, <laughs> 40 years wandering the wilderness to find the promised land. Um, you know, so those, those, those are some, I guess, I don't want to call them tangible. I don't want to call them non-tangible, but those are things that I really started to learn from my mentor that changed my life because anyone can learn a skill. If someone knows that skill, it's not hard to learn the insurance industry that we're in, whether it be property and casualty or health mm -hmm. or annuities, it's, it's just learning that skill, mortgage protection, final expense. And that skill alone is not going to get you to where you want to go in my belief into where you really want to achieve at a, at a higher level without having those you know, um, other things that are put in place that successful, wealthy people do. Yeah. Yeah. No, and that's strong. I mean, I, I've, I'm a big student of Jim Rohn myself. Absolutely love his work. And, you know, I come from the network marketing world too early on. And that was all those kind of things where, you know, I'm 18 years old, listen to Kiyosaki and Jim Rohn. So I love it. And, and it, those kind of things, Nate, I think people, take for granted because those type of things that personal development really can shape the course of your success. I mean, I started listening to that with Jim Rohn and having that, you know, back in the day when we had tapes, right? When we burned yeah, through yeah, a tape yeah, so yeah, much, yeah. you know, you, I, you know, having that. Because you listen to it so many times. Yeah. Rolling <laughs> yeah <university>. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you talk about burning CDs. I mean, I did that when I was driving around my car at 18 years old and it, it takes time and like I'm 34 now. And I, you know, I thought, it, I thought I'd get successful a lot faster than I am, you know? And so I don't feel but, bad for you. I'm 46. So you got another 10 years. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, that's just, that's the journey. It's a journey, you know, and it is, and I love what, I love the analogy of driving 10 miles an hour straight to a destination versus a hundred miles, because I agree with you, man. Again, coaching 4,000 people. It just has to be towards a destination. It can towards be a destination. Downhill, and downhill, right? I exactly. mean, we had, you know, I don't want to let this, this, uh, I want to, uh, don't want to believe at this point, but I do. So we are doing a, um, our number one writer in our agency this month, I don't know, close to 30,000 or whatever case may be. Um, no, it was for the week. Anyway, she, she had her record month. Mm -hmm. and I was talking to her with what she used to do. And I mean, it just gives me chills. I mean, the testament of this industry, five months ago, she was working in the distribution center at Walmart. Mm -hmm. and her job was cutting up boxes. Wow. 19 bucks an hour. She maxed out. Dual income family. One child, husband gets in a severe accident, almost crushes his legs, lost his job, no income. All of a sudden, she wakes up in the morning and she's 100% solely responsible for her entire family's financial future, working at Walmart in the distribution center, cutting up boxes. And five months later, she's on track right now to earn a six figure income in the mortgage protection business that business that I'm in. And I asked her without calling her up ahead of time. She didn't know she's going to be on the call. I said, what was the main difference? What do you think that you did that got you to where 
when I inter- talked to you five months ago, she was shaking on the on the Zoom meeting, could barely speak. And she said, my first call, I announced my own name wrong. She goes, this is Jennifer Deeker. And then this, her husband's like, her name's Decker. And her husband goes, did you just tell them your last name was Deeker? She goes, yes, I'm just really scared, nervous, and freaked out. Like, I, I, I'm like, I don't, I'm so out of my element. And, you know, you could expect, what was it? Oh, it was your 10-step system with the videos teaching you about the product and this and that. And everything. That's what she said. I was so, I was so like, happy. and there's other people involved for six months that came back from a sales background. They can't, you know, sell north of $10,000 in a month, right? Yeah. And you know what she said? She goes, I never knew the power of personal growth. Mm-hmm. I said, what do you mean by that? She goes, I just started to, I listened to what you told me and I just got finished listening to the audio book on Think and Grow Rich, How to Win Friends, Influence People, Power of Positive Thinking. Those are the books my mentor turned me on to right away was Think and Grow Rich and and, uh, How to Win Friends, Influence People. And she goes, I just never had a formula to where confidence came from. And now I understand how I can develop my confidence. And so I had this frail, shy, insecure, scared girl with her skill set was cutting boxes at the wall. I'm not making fun of that skill set, but it has nothing to do with our business. Sure. To where she was in our top, you know, top uh, 10 rookie writers in our entire um, organization within less than five months. Hmm. And she now has this, I said, how does it make you feel now you have a skill set knowing no matter what happens in your life, you can pick up the phone, get on the phone and make over a hundred thousand dollars a year. It's like a tear almost came to her eye. Now did the 10 step stuff that we have put in place did that help? We just have to learn the skill. Of course. But there's how many out of the hundred people on the phone that learned the same skill she learned, but didn't have the same results. Mm-hmm. And that difference was that she was willing to accept and understand that the personal growth, that that was going to be the key component to her developing into who she wants to become. And so many people miss that. And yep. it's not sexy, man. It's not yeah. sexy to say, you know, I'm doing personal growth can be devotions. The Bible is a great success book, right? <laughs> I'm a firm believer in it. Doesn't mean you have to believe in it. It does, you know, it, what it, my wife, I mean, I wish she was here with this. She, her life changed with personal growth, yeah. right? And she has some friends with all that psycho babble BS and da 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 da. And, stuff. and she can't go like she, hour a day. She's at the gym, yoga, treadmill, it's in her ears. She's playing it for my son in the car. My son does 15 minutes of personal growth every day. He writes down what he learned and how he can apply it to his life. He's been doing it since he's been eight years or four years old. He's now 15. Wow. Like, I don't expect him to be a millionaire between four and 15, but it's in there. <laughs> Yeah, his brain is getting it. Your pro, your brain, your computer. That's another thing my mentor taught me. Your brain is a computer, and what you put in is what you get out. And so many people just don't believe it. If you understand and study the brain, neuroplasticity, and everything, mm-hmm. it's all there now. All the stuff that think uh, you know they talked about, think and grow rich, is all proven scientifically. Yeah, they're about neuroplasticity and how they're formed and how gateway the pathways through the mylar in your brain is formed. And the more and more you do something, the more it creates that pathway. I mean, it's all now they can see in the brain. If you actually research, it's pretty amazing (laughs) stuff that it's proven that your mental capacity has an effect on your outward life period. Let's just leave it at that. Right. They, they, they proved it. What was it? What's that, uh, New science, they not new science, but that science they always can't remember the name of the damn damn science. It was called um, quantum physics. Quantum God, physics. Quantum physics. And that may be out there for people, but they're building computers with quantum physics and they're understanding that there really is a connection between the way your brain works and how um, Think and Grow Rich talked about the radio waves. It's a receiving signal and a transmitting signal. And you may think it's goofy, you may think it's crazy, it might be still silly. They're proving that it's reality. Right. And so this thing is the most powerful thing that we have. I'm not perfect at it, but I got to protect it mm-hmm. from all the negativity and stuff. Cause what I put in was what's going to come out. So I told my wife, I said, what we put in his head, it'll eventually come out when it needs to come out. He's being, we're programming, we're brainwashing our child. God sake, <laughs> with success principles, how to have a good lifestyle. You know, people go, we just come back to this thing. Oh, your friends are like, Oh, do you went to one of those brainwashing seminars? My mentor used to say, if your brain ain't dirty, it didn't need to be washed. It needs to be washed. Most of our brains are dirty from, influences outside of you know just broke people negative people people aren't going anywhere in life and and that's i want to go on a tangent but social media yep it's killing it's killing not only kids brains but adults now on the top the things that they mm. anyway we'll just leave it at that because i always get in trouble yeah. talking about social media but <laughs> no you're good i like it and i use it for business 
Yep. And I go follow people who like you, like a Cody Askins, like a coach Burke. And I, I don't scroll. I can't scroll. I don't want to scroll. If I scroll, start things start happening in my brain that I don't want to happen in my brain. And I'm, I'm as much susceptible to it as anybody else. I realized from a mentor is you're not that strong, Nate. People think they're stronger than they are. You're not that strong. If you watch pornography every single day, you're going to eventually cheat on your wife because you're not that strong. If you hang out with a bunch of people that are doing drugs, you're going to end up doing drugs because you're not that strong. The human, there's, you're not that strong. We weren't created to be that strong. So it's like he taught me how to really protect my brain as my computer, right? And he had a really, I don't know if I'd share it with you, good visual, but probably some people get offended with it. And he said, imagine laying down and you turned upside down and you just, hey, go ahead and piss in my ear. Pee in my ear. Go ahead. Pee in my ear. What do you do? If someone just sits there and starts peeing in, inside your ear, like, it's probably a better visual when you actually lay down and show someone, but like, because that's what you're letting other people do. Negative influences, yeah. negative friends, negative media, negative, whatever you're letting them get into your computer that controls your outcome of your life. And you're letting them program it. Like, why would you let them program it? So, you know, those are, you've asked for some things that, that he taught me. Those are really things that changed my life. You know, it wasn't the one line phrase where, you know, uh, you know, uh, are your legs tired? I don't know why, because you've been running around in my head all day. It wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> like, it wasn't like we had these one liners that yeah. we did it. He did teach me some skills, but I don't, we don't have time to talk about. If you come to a SWAT training, you can learn them about, you know, how to create a realization in the mind of the buyer that they need what you have. That's a huge skill through visualization. I create in your, how do I create a, in the mind of a buyer that you need what I have, you'll buy whatever I'm selling. And then how to really communicate to people the language that they speak, um, because everyone speaks a different language, quote unquote, in terms of their personality. Right. And a lot of salespeople get in the way of the message because they become the message instead of the messenger. Right. And they're not able to really deliver the information to that client or prospective prospect in their language that they speak. And they're more concerned about instead of finding out what movie they're watching to try to force them to change the channel. But if I can't find out what movie you're watching and I can find that out then I can easily change your channel and let you feel like it was your idea to change the channel. Right. So that those are, those are life changing recruiting skills and, and, and uh, selling skills. But at the same time, you don't need to have them to have success. You can get them, have them to take you to a higher level, a difference between getting three out of 10 and closing nine out of 10, those skills come into play. But if you get the first part of what we talked about, that success will come even if you're only getting three out of 10 because your mindset's right, right. different. Your mentality is different. You're doing different things. You're on your people. Then you start to develop all that stuff. You have to fake the confidence and fake the, uh, the you know, your uh, don't fake sincerity. I'd certainly say if you can learn to fake sincerity, you'll have success. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's, kind of an, that's kind of an oxymoron, right? How, how do you fake sincerity? So um, hopefully that may be some of the things that you were looking for. I mean, it's kind of. No, that was, that was great. That yeah, was great. You know, and. I don't think enough people talk about mindset, you know, especially the way you laid it out and the importance of it and the way you think differently, because it's true, man. You know, I mean, it, it, it's very easy to get knocked off course because of something you hear, something that's negative, and we were around it all day long, 24-7, so you got to block it out. Uh, let, let's kind of shift over to, tell me about SWAT. How does SWAT come around? Tell us a little bit about that event that you put on and really the purpose behind it. Why did you pursue something like that when, you, you know, you've had your own agency for so long and you really kind of opened it up to to the industry i think we're out of time now you know i wouldn't want to keep it to a certain time i, I don't want to like board the list. <laughs> yeah okay. I, you got you give me give me 10 if you can give me 10 more i'll be i'll be fired up i'd be appreciative uh, of it I, i'll give you an hour but like i said i always end up looking at someone goes we usually last 30 to 45 minutes i'm ah, you're good. like this is Sorry a long podcast I ever had um strategic wealth accumulation tactics it's kind of a cool little name i came up with um, for our agency, SWAT Financial, um, and also just, you know, strategic wealth accumulation tactics you can use in, in, in every area of your life, whatever that may be. You can strategic wealth accumulation tactics, sell annuities. That's a strategic wealth accumulation tactic, right? Yep. Um, recruiting, building a business, uh, selling, however you want to look at it. Um, and, you know, I kind of put the acronym name with SWAT because SWAT is like the elite of the elite. You know, who doesn't want to be part of the SWAT team? You know, oh, it's yeah. kind, of, kind of aggressive elite of the elite. You know, um, and I kind of came up that with my with my team and, and we started uh, building a team. And really what I was doing was taking the information that I learned from my mentor and infusing it into the people that I was training. Hmm. Um, and that's why we were able to have the growth that we had, you know, coming into the industry with 
I had zero background in, in, in insurance, but I do know how to build teams. I knew how to motivate teams. Um, and, you know, I knew about people. So going out and writing 15,000 in a week or 50,000 in a month or 85,000 in six weeks back in November, December of 2008, people were all like, oh, like, again, I cheated. So like, I wasn't impressed with myself. I'm like, well, I know people. I can walk into a home. First of all, they already fell out a freaking lead. That makes it 10 times easier. So I'm not trying <laughs> right. to... I'm not trying to create a need. I already have it right here. Yep. And all I got to do is make creative realization in the mind of them that they need what I have. And it's a luxury versus a necessity versus a luxury. And so that, that came very simple to me because I never had a lead in my life. Network marketing, can you imagine buying a lead if somebody who goes, I want to build a business and work part-time from home and recruit my friends and family. Oh, sure. I mean, that'd be an easy one to close, right? Right. <laughs> or, or I want your, I want a diet powder or whatever it was you're selling. So that came simple to me, <clears throat> but by me helping teach other individuals in my sales force, we grew, you know, we recruited like 69 agents within our first 60 days. And we grew an agency up to a hundred thousand a month in less than five months. Wow. And we were doing paper apps, driving to people's homes. We didn't know what the heck we we're doing. And we hit, you know, a million dollars. And then we doubled it to $2 million. And we doubled it to $4 million. And we doubled it to $8 million. And we were hit, you know, number one agency um, owners in the company the first year, number one agency directors the second year, number one regional agency directors the third, so on and so forth, you know, top base shop. And we just on a tear, we, we just, we're, we're killing it. And, you know, when I met Cody for the first time, I went to 8% nation. <clears throat> um, I had met coach mm -hmm. um, and he was in the VIP thing. I walked with coach. I said, Hey, listen, I need you in my life. I hired him as a coach immediately developed a great relationship with Cody. I'm trying to go really fast here. And they came to one of my events and said, Hey, we're doing a kickoff for our, our team, you know, our agency. Would you mind coming and speaking? And so Cody said, absolutely. He'd come and coach came um, and we did the whole two day event. And Cody, you know, I, I went up to him afterwards. I said, Hey guys, what'd you think? And man, Cody's like, man, this is awesome. This is incredible. I don't know why you're not doing this for everybody. And then, you know, um, coach, I asked coach what, you know, he thought and he said, uh, he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, Oh boy. I mean, what am I doing? Like, you didn't like it. He goes, I, yeah, I liked it. He goes, what are you doing? I said, I don't know what you're doing. He's like, why are you not taking this outside of just your own agency and sharing this with everybody? Cause everyone needs to learn this stuff everybody needs to know the stuff that you're teaching about what you're teaching at this high level. It's like not only in the insurance industry, he was even talking the other day. He's like in any industry and it's the reality. It's not my stuff, right? Yeah. It's not, I can't take stuff, my stuff. There's two people on the planet that's licensed to use my mentor's material. And I'm one of them on the entire planet. Just so happens that he lives less than a mile down the street from me now too. <laughs> so we got a chance to reconnect and it was funny because I got to go meet at the country club that we were, I didn't know he's a member of the same country club. And he, he knew me when I was broke and didn't, was driving around, a, didn't have a car, then driving around a piece of crap Nissan Maxima to where, you know, we pulled in together at the country club and he had his, of course, his SLR McLaren. I got my McLaren, his McLaren took a picture. I mean, it was very <laughs> surreal, right? Which is really cool. Um, and so I really actively pursued having him back in my life and he lives down the street and he's, you know, coaching me again, which is pretty awesome. And, and, uh, actually showed up at my last event. I got, so talk about full circle. Nice. Here I am a broke college dropout kids, you know, staying up till four in the morning to, to get up at three or four in the morning and get in line. So I can have a front row seat. Cause it was first come first serve. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. People go to events and they sit in the back. I just don't get it. <laughs> now let's go to Super Bowl. We're going to sit at the back. Yeah. So the same people that if you gave them a choice between sitting in the front and the back of a concert or a Super Bowl or any sporting event would all pick the front. For some right. reason, they think for their financial Super Bowl, they're going to sit in the back. Yeah, sorry, I mean, I don't get on it, but I don't get it. Like it doesn't, common sense was one thing. My, my mentor said common sense is so not common. It should be a superpower, hmm. right? I go to an event. I want to go to a concert. Where do I want to sit? Up front. Someone came and go, you want to sit in the front or back? Front. Super Bowl. You want to sit in a 50 yard line or up in the nosebleeds? At the yard line. Hey, you're going to an event. You want to sit in the front and back? Oh, I'll just buy a general ticket. I just, just want to make sure I'm there. <laughs> so you care more about watching a millionaire play a game than you do about your own financial future? That doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to me. But that's why they're where they're at financially. That's right. Right? So, you know, <clears throat> what's cool is I, I here I am sitting on the third row with, you know, for my mentor, and then full circle coming around, oh, man, 20 years later, I'm sitting on stage with him while he's training the people in the audience. And that, that was really a cool experience because i've always been watching him train and to be sitting up on stage with him and feeling the audience if you ever sp spoke around you understand feeling the audience and feeling the energy yeah. and watching people's faces was a whole new level of experience to me because you know i'm up there with the you know my mentor would fill a coliseum at the mgm grand theater thirteen thousand people it was my second training i went to 
1996, no internet, no social media. 13,000 people filled in the MGM Grand Stadium and paid $1,000 to $3,000 a pop to hear him speak for two and a half days. And here he is sitting next to me. What, a couple hundred people are in the room that paid maybe, you know, 500 bucks, 2,000 bucks, 1,000 bucks, whatever ticket level they got, 700 bucks, whatever ticket was. And I got a chance to experience him teaching for two, three hours and me being on stage with him. That was, it was just mind blowing. And it, I learned so much because the things I used to see, because sometimes like he's very, um, he doesn't mince words and he's very, he's very, he says it how it is, which sometimes people don't like. And sometimes your feelings of what you think or believe or feel get in the way of what someone else really needs. And so every time he'd say stuff, and I'd be like, oh my God, but oh my God, this good. And to be able to be on stage and see maybe one or two people that were acting like me when he said something, and the rest of the entire audience sit up in their chair and be like, mm. I was yep. like, whoa. My own little feelings of how I feel, what I was brought up, and what my beliefs and Mick tre- Mick, trigger Mick mechanisms is not the same as everybody else. And 90% of the people just responded awesome to what normally I would be like, oh, I, and cower from. Right, and that, right. that's a huge difference too. Because it gave me more confidence of really seeing about, you know, the stuff that he teaches and everything else. So it was pretty awesome full circle. So we now open it up to everyone in the insurance industry. I mean, it could be, it, you go there, you don't even know it's an insurance conference. I mean, it's not like we sit there and talk about the disability waiver premium and <laughs> the disability forms, right. and, you know, what, how, what the return of premium looks like on the Americo app versus 100 yeah, versus right. HMO, CBO, whatever it is. We don't even talk about any of that. I mean, the stuff that we teach can be it's it, it's can be universally uh, taken into any sales position, a relationship, raising your kids. Um, it's all the same sales skill. Yeah. How to deal with people, right? How to help people formulate, you know, come to a decision on their own and make it feel like it's their idea. How to have a win-win. Because the last one we did with Millionaire Workshop, and I talked about you know chess and the objective of, of, of chess is to, you know, formulate a plan, right? Know your opponent, formulate a plan. And then your, your goal is to be able to, you know, capture the king, right? At the very end. Well, negotiations in chess, the difference between chess is that there's always a winner and a loser in a negotiation. You have both, both can win, mm. you know, in chess, you sometimes have to make sacrifices for the ultimate goal. Same thing in a negotiation, don't you? Yeah. Right. Yep. You can win in chess with less pieces than the other person, can't you? Mm-hmm. You can do the same thing in a negotiation. So skills like that that he taught me, I wasn't, I didn't grow up learning, um, you know, again, changed my life to where I went from network marketing, made millions of dollars, got out of that, went to credit card processing, made millions of dollars, got out of that, and gave into insurance and made millions of dollars. Mm. So three different industries, same skill set, same things I learned from my mentor applied in three different industries, all with the same result. And every time was more money than I made before in the same industry. So is it the industry? Is it the product? Is it the compensation plan? Or is it you? Is it me? Is it us? Exactly. So I figured I had to work on me. And if I learn those things, I have a competitive advantage. So now I'm going, hey, I'll give a competitive advantage. Why? I had a mentor come to my life and change my life. If I can be, and again, I'm not the only one there, Ryan. I mean, I got Cody Askins there, Pete Farm. Everyone that's there is qualified. That they have done what they're teaching, number one. So it's not a bunch of motivational speakers or some guy right. publishing a book that he wants to talk about. They've done it. If Pete Fournier went out and wrote hundred thousand dollars in personal production and life, life business in one month, he can show you how to do 10. Mm-hmm. If Cody Askins took a, a video where I always show, he hates me for it, where he's in a squeaky little chair on his first YouTube video, go watch it and like it. If say Nate don't sent me here. Say, if you're watching, go to YouTube channel for Cody Askins, watch his first video and put in the comments. Nate sent me here. It'd be kind of funny. <laughs> like, hi, I'm here to teach his to where he's going to do 20 million in revenue. And five years later, yeah, qualified to show you how to scale a business. Yeah. Right. You know, so on and so forth. So I don't want to leave people out that are talking. So I bring in speakers to teach you what they've done that have the actual path an actual way and tangible strategic Wealth accumulation taxes to show you how to get there. So it's not just about Nate offer, but I bring to you a piece of the puzzle that my mentor brought to me. Um, and so I truly believe, which it's, it's done very, very well. Uh, people all the time, well, what if I, I don't know if I want my agents to come? Someone well, we might try to recruit them. It's no recruiting, it's no recruiting environment, which I think is silly too. Mm-hmm. I have a beautiful wife. 
She's gorgeous, gets hits on all the time. I married up. It shows my sales ability. If you've ever questioned my sales ability, go look at my Facebook, look at my wife, and you'll go, wow, I'm good in sales. Look at me, look at her. <laughs> I had no money when I met her. I was actually broke. Okay. So <laughs> that shows that shows the the the, the sales ability that you, you have. Um, <clears throat> but the, the thing is that though I forgot where I was saying now because I was saying the the uh, uh, the ability to learn those strategic wealth accumulation tactics can be applied to any and all businesses, especially this business, right? But I truly believe, like I said with my wife, I'm not worried about going to 8% Nation or going to these conferences and people stealing my agents. I never lost any agents to another higher comp plan or anything else. It's kind of like, if I can't lock my wife up and not let her go to the gym because guys hit on her all the time. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. If I'm not providing to my wife what she needs, because if you ask my wife physically what she likes, that's at the gym, <laughs> not here. Ask her. She'll be honest with you. Big muscles, stronger, not here at the gym. But am I worried about when she goes to the gym every day? No, because if I'm providing her what she needs on the other levels, which are more important than just the physical, then she's going to be with me. And if I'm not, she's going to leave me anyway. Right. So again, what's, what's an internal locus of control or external locus of control? Oh my God, I don't want to go to the gym because I'm afraid I got to hit her. Or do I need to become the best husband I can be so she's never going to want to leave me because she has the best man in her life? And that's what I strive to be. And that's who I am. That's why I got her. That's why I'm not worried about it. Same thing in your business. Are you worried about your comp plan or the hierarchy or your upline or this? Or, oh my God, do you become the best sponsor, the best mentor, the best person? They're going to be have fulfilled what they need. They're not going to go somewhere else because of a contract. But anyway, we don't do any recruiting on, on that level scale. I truly believe there's what 300 some million people now on the planet and everyone above the age of what is it? Four weeks for a children's policy, four weeks old, I think with mutual Omaha, I think two or four, every single person on this, not in the planet, in the United States of America, we have 300 million, not plants, billions. You needs our product, yep. whether it's property and casually, every business owner needs that product, whether it's health insurance, every person needs that product, whether it's life insurance, everybody needs that product, whether it's annuity, everyone needs to protect their retirement and their investment, you name it, any in, in, in our industry, it's car insurance, everyone who drives needs that product, anything in the insurance industry, they all need that product. And there's enough of money to go around in the trillion dollar industry that I'm not worried about teaching somebody outside of my downline that I'm not going to make money off of them how to have success because it will come back full circle. The people have already been coming to SWAT have brought me more, not directly, but indirectly have brought me more wealth, money, and other things besides money into my life that that investment of my time and energy for their $500 ticket or whatever it was has turned tenfold into, into my favor. You know, so I always believe what you put out, you get back. So to me, it's like, if I could just be the person to help create an army of people that are, are you know, really on a level that they can really execute at a high level, um, we all win. We yep. all win. I mean, it's like, I don't make money on you. You don't make money on me. But if I bring value to one of your listeners, guess what? That's, 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 that's a token in the, in the, in the uh, bank for the karma bank. Yep. Hey, exactly. I spent an hour out of my day zero interest. You're not paying me. You're not getting paid, but I can have value to that person's life. That into me, the universe will reward me tenfold on that. Yep. So every impact I can make in someone else's life, whether I receive immediate, that's what people don't understand about success too. You said, and I'll end with this one. Most people judge success based upon immediate results, tangible things that they can see. Mm. And the thing that most people don't realize is that 90% of success you're not going to see until later, a later point in your life. Yep. I don't know if it's 10 years, 20 years, a year, 10 months or a week, but the things that you do, the farmer that plants the seed does not see the growth and the tree and the harvest immediately. And so many people get caught up in that thing. So it almost getting a lead and selling a product, product and getting a policy issue paid and getting a deposit in your bank the next day is not success. That that's just, that's just, you're just doing it, right? right? That, right. That's just, that's not where you're going to get your long-term success on it until you create systems or anything else. So it's about having that ability to realize and understand that everything that you do, you're piling up, like he called these tokens of the karma bank where I may not see it now, but eventually it'll come back to me. I don't know what shape, way, or form it'll come back, but it will come back. So if you really honestly, truly believe it, then you can live your life that way. And that's what pisses people off. They go, yep. Yep. I don't understand why he's having success all of a sudden. 
Well, he's not having success all of a sudden. He's been all of a sudden in for 10 years, planting the seeds, right? Filling right. the soil, pulling yep. the weeds, watering the roots, pulling the weeds, replanting when the locust comes through, replanting when the drought comes through. And he's been working his ass off farming and tilling the ground, clearing the foot. But all of a sudden now you drive by his farm and see all this big, huge apple orders. You go, oh, look, he must have been lucky. <laughs> And that was, I mean, he, he, I just dressed up as a farmer character and did a character similar to that, the last SWAT training. And he would dress up with different characters and teach us success principles. And that's the kind of stuff that got me here or else why I wouldn't do this. There's people right now that wouldn't do this because they'd be like, well, how much you pay me? What am I getting out of it? Right. I'm not looking at what I'm getting out of it. I just put an hour of, of tokens into the karma bank, which they will reward me. The universe, God, whatever you believe in, again, yep. will reward me for me taking time out of my day to teach you what my mentor taught me or help have some type of impact. It will be rewarded. And I know that without a shadow of my doubt. And I don't need to have someone tell me yes or no, or you're crazy or you're believing some psycho babble, whatever. Because if I look at my life now versus where it was 10 years ago or 20 years ago, it's been rewarded. Absolutely. And it continues to be rewarded. So you got to keep sowing the seeds. If you sow the seeds, the success will be there. Just don't think, you know, don't live in a microwave society. Everything's so instant. I mean, my God, now it's worse, man. Instant everything. Yep. Before I mean, you meet a girl and you have to wait like a week before she got your letter, you know, <laughs> then the phone came out. You know what I'm saying? Like, seriously, right? You write oh, letters back and forth. Now it's just, oh, you're hot. Oh, you too. Great. What, what's your name? Next thing you know, it's like, Oh, it's like everything's so instant. It makes success more difficult because they want the same type of, oh, flip the phone. What's the weather? Okay, great. Text my friend. Okay, you didn't text me back. I text you four times. Like, boom, 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 boom. Right. All of a sudden they get success. And it's like, if it doesn't happen in three weeks, it's like, oh, that doesn't work. This is too hard. <laughs> Which comes to this final point and makes it that much easier for you to get ahead financially now these days is because everyone else you're competing with is programmed that instant, instant, instant they're yep, instant yep. people they go to the grocery store they think the food grows on the shelves instant they want everything instant they want their email instant they want their news instant they want their relationship instant they want to fall in love in a day or in a season of the bachelorette everything they want is instant and so our competition to get wealthy is a lot easier now because everyone's getting drawn to more instant 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 wealth takes build 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 long term sow the seeds reap the harvest at another time and most people don't have the mentality right so yep now you're right and well, easier. This, this has been phenomenal, man. I mean, you, that's definitely, you dropped some bombs on this show today. And, and I know that myself, I'm going to watch this a ton of times because you, you know, some of the stuff that you are talking about really brought me back to my early days with the network marketing world and the personal development. It's like, you know, you've heard it so many times, but hearing it again really, you know, brings it back to life. And so I thank you so much, man, for taking, you know, an hour out of your day to share with our audience and, and the listeners. And I, I know, I got a lot of it, so I know other people will get a lot of it too. Uh, but listen, if you like this show, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave us a comment. I'm actually curious to hear some of the comments on some of the stuff that Nate talked about, because this is high-level stuff you know, that he brought down to simple terms that anybody can use. So, Nate, thanks so much for being on the show today, man, and we look forward to hopefully having you back in the future. No, I appreciate it. If you guys want to learn more about uh, SWAT, you can go to SWAT training, S-W-A-T training.info forward slash learn more, or you just go to SWAT train.info forward slash events for upcoming events. So if you want to, I guess I got social media now. So if you go to like <laughs> Nate Offert, I think N-A-T-E-A-U-F-F-O-R-T is my Facebook or SWAT underscore training is Instagram, something like that. You can find it. We'll link it in the, we'll link it in below in this video. So don't have to worry about following all that. We'll put it right below. Make sure you link to it. So Nate, thanks again, buddy, for being on. All right. Take care. Thank you, sir. Yep.